Welcome to the third part of the tutorial series on reinforcement learning in Godot. In this part, we will implement Lander Agent. Now, back in our Lander Environment project, let's remove the icon sprites that we added in the previous tutorial part. The main body of the Lander Agent is represented by the collision shape. Let's change the shape to rectangle shape and set the extents to 50 by 50. To make uh, the body visible, we add child sprites with a gradient texture. The gradient will use just one plain color. And let's start set the color to blue or gray blue. Now change uh, the rectangle of the sprite to 50 by 50 and check enabled. Our shape is that too big. Uh, let's resize it to match the sprite. Yeah, looks good. Every lander needs landing legs, and uh, we'll make some. We'll use collision shapes for representing them. Let's call this one left leg, and by the way, rename the body collision shape to body. We assign capsule shape to our landing legs. Move and rotate the leg to the left. Duplicate the left leg, move it to the right side of the lander. Now rename the node, and voila, we have two legs. Now, to make them visible, we add two children line 2D nodes. Assign the vertices to the lines and rename uh, it to the line left. Then duplicate it and match the right leg. Finally, rename uh, it to the line right. Also, let's make collision shapes match the line sizes. To have an outline of the lander, we add the edges. We'll use particle 2 nodes to visualize them. First uh, one will be the main engine. It will be emitting from the bottom. And seems like we messed up somewhere. We need to use CPU particle 2 d node uh, because we use OpenGL ES2. Now we have to tweak some properties. First we change the number of particles to 32. The time speed scale will be 4. Randomness 0.6. In drawing, we turn off local coordinates, then change the emission shape to box with sizes 10 to 1. In the direction we leave the default values, uh, gravity will be 9.8, direction speed 10, initial velocity 100. So let's change the direction to 0, 1. Then change the scale to 6 and randomness to 0.5. Then we create so the color gradient. The first point will be yellow and the second point will set to red. Now, why our trace has this weird offset? Where we messed up? Oh, I see. It's somewhere good or bad. Now everything looks fine. We duplicate the particle node and rename it to the left engine. Uh, move it to the left side of the lander body change the number of particles to 8, then change emission shape to 1 by 2 box, and alter the direction to minus 1, 0. Hit the left engine emitter, uh, drag it to the right, and change the direction to 1, 0. And finally turn the emission off. Let's start writing the script for the lander node. We'll begin with their implementing act function. First, we switch all the engines off by turning the emitters off. From now on, uh, our action tensor will have two variables. The first value will be responsible for the main engine, and the second one for the side engines. We turn the main engine on when the first action value is more than 0.5. This way, the neural network will have harder time controlling the lander because it cannot throttle the engine down enough to hover in one place. We set the engine power to be action 0, but clamped between 0 and 1. And let's define power variables for the main engine, left and right engines. Now, if the action 1 is more than 0.5, we switch on the left engine. And we compute uh, its power by clamping action 1 between 0 and 1. Same code is repeated for the right engine, except uh, if action uh, 1 is less than minus 0.5, we turn it on. 
Now we have to implement the effects of the engines in the function integrate forces. First, we grab uh, the transform of the actor from the state. Now, if the main engine is firing, we calculate the force uh, using uh, by, by transforming vector zero main engine magnitude uh, from the local to global coordinates. The offset of the main engine with respect to the center of mass will be vector 0.25, also transformed to the global coordinate system. Then we apply impulse uh, at the point of set with the direction force and magnitude engine power. We have to define the main engine magnitude will set it to 5. Similarly, let's define side engine magnitude and set it to 1. The effect for the side engine code will be extremely similar to the main engine code. In the case of the left engine, uh, the force will be directed along x-axis. And instead of uh, main engine magnitude, we use side engine 1. The offset vector will be minus 25, minus 25. And finally, we apply impulse with a left engine power instead of the main one. The code is almost the same uh, in the case of the right engine, or with the exception that the force will be directed in the opposite direction, and the offset will be plus 25, minus 25. And finally, the impulse is scaled by the right engine power. Back uh, in the environment script, we add a new key to the user inputs that will control the main engine. We will assign uh, this function to the W key. We also have to change the action assigned to the A and D keys to control the side engines. Now let's check if everything runs and we have an error. Turns out we forgot to change uh, the action array to have two values instead of one. Let's run again and it launches, but nothing moves. Turns out we forgot to change force variables for the left and uh, the right engines. Let's try to launch again and still nothing moves. So we had two problems. Uh, the property one shot in the timer should be set to true. Second problem is that the agent goes to the sleeping mode state. So we turn on the gravity and we also set a can sleep property to false. Well, everything just works. And the final test running from the Python script. We export the PCK, then we go to the Python script. Here we change the number of actions of the environment class and we pass a random tensor of the size to, to the environment. Let's check it. And it does indeed work. So, in, in this part of the tutorial we implemented uh, the agent. So, see you in the next one.